Hi everybody, it's Frank here. Well, it's 2014, which means it's the 30th anniversary of the original Macintosh computer. And that got me to thinking, got me to looking in the closet, and I thought it'd be kind of fun to dig out my old Mac Plus here that's been in this bag for at least a dozen years or more and see if that thing actually works. Well, after pulling everything out of the box and hooking it all together, and including the hard drive and firing this thing up, the good news is the computer started right up, no worries at all, except the hard drive is not found. Hmm. Well, when I powered on the hard drive, I can hear the fan inside, but I don't really hear the drive itself spinning up, and after it runs a little while, you'll hear a little bleep, and I'm not hearing that either, so I think the platter in the drive is not spinning. That's what it seems like. So I'm going to pull this thing open and see if I can fix it. Well, while I'm taking this thing apart, and I'll be doing a lot of chopping and editing here so you don't have to watch the whole boring process, let's talk a little bit about the history of the Macintosh. A lot of people don't realize that the Macintosh product was actually started by an engineer at Apple by the name of Jeff Raskin back in 79 while Jobs was busy working on the Lisa project. Jeff was a pretty smart guy. In fact, his 1967 doctoral thesis argued for having computers with graphical interfaces instead of text. Kind of a guy ahead of his time, much like Jobs was. Well, his initial goal was to create a $1,000 machine for the masses. This was an almost impossible goal price-wise, and he was looking at a little 5-inch screen, an anemic processor, and enough RAM to do almost nothing. At one point, the floppy drive was thought to be too expensive, and an audio tape drive was considered. Anybody ever use one of those? Not too much fun. Raskin also hated the idea of using a mouse. Okay, I've got the cover off of this thing. Notice I have the power cord unplugged. The power supply section is at the bottom of the screen here. And if you don't know what you're doing around electricity, leave the cover on. Have somebody else do this. Because even when things are unplugged, sometimes power supplies in particular can hold a charge that could be considered lethal. So, you know, if you don't know what you're doing, you may end up assuming room temperature. And we don't want that. So what I'm going to do here first, I'm going to unplug the power to that fan and plug this thing back in, turn it on, see if the hard drive makes any sound at all. And we've got nothing, no sound, no activity. So it looks like the platter is just not turning in this drive, or the drive may be completely dead, which is unlikely because it worked when it was put away. So I have a feeling that the platter is just stuck. So I'm going to pull the drive out, and we'll check that out. And while I'm doing that, I'll get back to our Mac history lesson. Well, we forward along to 1980, and Jobs had been booted from the Lisa project and kind of moved his way into the Macintosh project. Well, the inevitable clash ensued as Jobs pushed to create something much more like the Lisa and less regard to hitting the unlikely price point. Well, Jeff was soon gone, and the 68000 processor was designed in to allow the machine to work with the graphical interface that Jobs wanted. Raskin went off to develop a computer that sold as the Canon Cat in 1987, and interestingly was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer at about the same time as Jobs, and died from it in 2005. And thumbs up to anybody that actually knows what a Canon Cat was. Around 85, the Macintosh was upgraded to the Macintosh Plus model. This one critically had the ability to add an external hard drive. And that, combined with the advent of desktop publishing and software like PageMaker, Quark, InDesign, and the introduction of the Apple LaserWriter, really got this thing in its stride. And the rest, as we shall say, is history. Now this particular hard drive I have here is one of the early hard drives for the Macintosh. It holds an amazing 20 megabytes of files. Yes, megabytes. And as I recall, we purchased this for about $800. Okay, I've got the screws out of the board. I lifted that thing up there. Hopefully you can see in here with this shot. And there's the actual flywheel for the platter. And 
check it here it's not stuck or anything it's got a little magnetic resistance as it should but it's not stuck I'm gonna give it just a few little turns here and what I'm gonna do is just set this up here and I'm just gonna power it on and see if I can get that drive to start spinning and it is doing nothing hmm so I'll pull that up again give it another little spin here try it again and well after a number of tries I did finally get this thing to start up and start working properly and it just seemed like it needed a little exercise of that motor there to get it started now that little blue thing on the middle of the board that's a glued on piece of plastic that's right over the shaft of the motor and I found if I tap that lightly just a few times the motor will start spinning also without having to lift the board up and actually turn the platter and that seems to work pretty reliably okay I'm gonna go ahead and test this a few more times just to make sure it's working pretty reliably before I pack it all back up it's kind of a pain to reassemble this thing and hopefully I'll have this thing up and running here and I'll be able to actually see what's on this hard drive after all these years and maybe do a little uh, copying and looking at some of my old files here before this thing ends up back in the bag for another decade or so hopefully let's keep our fingers crossed okay so what I ended up doing is I took the case apart and I drilled this half inch hole here that's directly underneath the shaft for the hard drive and the way to get this thing to start up is I just turn it on I can hear the fan running here and then just give that a few gentle taps and almost as soon as I tap that the first time I can hear the the fan kinda of slow down just a touch as the hard drive starts spinning and now you can clearly hear the hard drive or at least I can and then very carefully and you can hear a little bleeping sound as it gets started up there so now that we have the hard drive running let's power this thing up and see if it'll boot from that hard drive ah it goes ping hello I am Macintosh it sure is great to get out of that bag. And I can see the little light blinking down there, and there it is, booting off that hard drive as normal. Yeah, it looks like all the programs are here, and everything seems to be working pretty well. Well, I'm pretty happy with the way this turned out. I know it's kind of a pain to turn the drive over and tap the bottom and set it back down every time you want to start it. But the real interest was in getting the access to the hard drive so I could play around with this thing like the good old days and also to check out files I have on here, see if there's anything I need to be backed up or, or whatever, see what's on all these floppies too while I'm at it. But before I slog through all those floppies and all the files on the hard drive, I get some work done. Well, I just wanted to throw in an update to this video. I've had this computer running off and on for about a month now on the desk here, and it's worked flawlessly every single time I've tried it. I do still have to tip the drive and tap the bottom very lightly, but it starts every time when I do that. Another thing I wanted to mention is I've gone through probably at least a hundred floppies on this thing, including original ones that came with the computer itself, and not one of these floppies, amazingly enough, is bad. Every single one of them reads without any problems. It's amazing. I don't know if it's something to do with the quality of the drive necessarily, or the density of the information on the 800K floppy, but they've been just amazingly reliable. I'm really impressed. This is in total contrast to latter day high density floppies where it seems like you use them a few times and then they just don't read anymore. They'll read in one drive and not another one. They'll get flaky and a lot of them you can't even reformat. They're just trash. So, you know, thumbs up for that. 
Well, I hope you found this video interesting or informative or both. And if you did, give me a thumbs up. And hopefully maybe there's somebody out there this will help them to get their drive working as well and get some files backed up and spend some quality time with an old friend.